Not a lot of people you hear demos, you hear bootlegs, and you go, wow. This guy figured it out before he even walked out his house. And what that thing was, was half brutal force and half finesse. It's bend as hard and as fast as you can bend, but hit the note like a paper airplane landing perfectly on the street, you know? I think if you'd never heard of him before, to watch a guy come out on stage and not even consider that it might possibly not go over, I think is what makes people kind of, um, kind of defend themselves for a minute over, well, what is this, really? Can I, can I really believe this? What, what's going on, you know? I was listening to Poison and Motley Crue, and then I heard Stevie Ray Vaughan, and there was, a, there was a big regime change in terms of posters in my bedroom wall, you know? If these weren't good tunes, they would just be excuses for guitar playing, and people would have eventually looked the other way, or he would have been a guitar playing phenomenon only within guitar players. Very few guitar players make it to the housewife contingency, and Steve Ray Vaughan did, and, and it's a testament to the triple threat of his voice, his guitar playing, and his tunes, you know. To play like Stevie Ray Vaughan, there are some people, and myself included, who given a certain time of day, certain part of the set, certain culminating energy that happens in the room, you can play with that same intensity, but you can only do it for about 20 seconds, and then your entire arm cramps up and you got nothing. Time Magazine is a periodical, National Geographic is a reference. And I think some music, most music, is a periodical. It is something that marks a certain time, a month, sometimes a week. And Stevie Ray Vaughan's music, like all the other great music, which is why it gets compared to Miles Davis, and I compare him to Miles Davis and Jimi Hendrix, there are references. It's almost not a cultural thing, it's just a natural thing, and I think that's what that's what Steve Ray Vaughan's music is. I'll be 50 and, and still be discovering something about it in the car. thinking I have to find out before the day is over who that guitar player is I mean, that doesn't happen to me very often that I get that way about listening to music I mean about three or four times in my life I've felt that way in a car listening to the radio where I've stopped the car pulled over and th listened and thought I've got to find out before the end of the day not the you know sooner or later but I have to know now who that is and I remember um, being fascinated by the fact that he never ever seemed to be lost in any way. I mean, it wasn't ever that he took a um, a breather or to, or paused to think where he was going to go next. It just flowed out of him. Always seemed to flow out of him. And actually, even that doesn't come just with virtuosity or practice or any of those. It's not a question of um, doing it over and over again or anything like that. It's just that he seemed to be an open channel. And it just flowed through him. He never, it never ever seemed to kind of dry up, you know. Because I play, like, I'm, when I play, I sometimes stop every now and then. I just stop and think, oh, what am I going to do now? Or, I don't want to do that. I don't want to repeat myself. So I'll get caught. I'll get caught up somehow. You know, free, you freeze. You kind of freeze. And a lot, most players do. And I never saw him do that. So he was a channel in some way. <laughs> Stevie had many ways of showing you that he uh, had 
not only talent, but he had the feel for playing blues. On his hands, it was, it looked, seemed to be flawless the way he moved with it. Uh, he, when I play, I play sort of like talking, you know, you know, syllables, you say a sentence here, a sentence there, and, you know, then I got to stop and think for something else to, to keep my conversation going. But his didn't seem to be that at all. It was fluent. It, he flowed when he played. Uh, he could get something going, and it, it was like a song, and it would just go on and on, and ideas continuously flowed. I don't have that. Uh, and there's not a lot of people that I hear that do have it. is to say, our message is to elevate, transform, and illumine fear. The, the lie, it's a lie, it's, it's an illusion lie that we are sep separate from God, that you're not worthy of God. That's bullshit. Well, I got to know him as one, one of my best friends before he passed away, and, I, and he, he, was, he was so much like myself when it comes to that. There wasn't anybody he didn't pick up on. You know, you could hear Otis Rush in him. You could hear a B.B. King on him. You could hear Elmo James on him, and he just went, and that's what make, I think makes a good guitar player, a good horn player, whatever. You know, you get them all, and you put them together. I guess that's why gumbo tastes so good, because you put everything in it. Stevie plugged in and, you know, and started playing Albert King licks and doing them really good. So Albert just sort of went, okay, and he just sort of took him under his wing. I wouldn't have dared gotten up there. I don't think anybody in the room would have got up there. You don't go and ask Albert King, can I sit in? You're crazy.